cap. It's a graduation tradition and we're going to do that, but this year we'd like to capture it on camera. The tossing of your cap happens at the end of the valedictorian speech. Uh, just a warning, those of you that are under the chandelier must be careful when tossing your cap. <laughs> if you hit the chandelier and damage it, the bill will be with your diploma when you pick it up. <laughs> when the valedictorian... I'm very happy about that. When the valedictorian speech is complete, we will coordinate the cap toss. So, when the speech is complete, we will coordinate the cap toss. Okay, let's do this. Valedictorian is an academic title given to the student selected by their peers to deliver the farewell statement a statement of inspiration and hope at a graduation ceremony. This is called the valedictory address. The term valedictory comes from the Latin term, vale di scere, meaning to say farewell. So to wrap up your, our evening, our ceremony, and the last four years of your high school experience, a final farewell from your selected representative. Ladies and gentlemen, and graduating class of 2022, your valedictorian, Cole Rutgers. Good evening to all parents, family, honored guests, and my fellow graduates. We are the graduating class of 2022. How could we forget it? It was back in grade 10 when we all celebrated after hearing that our March break was going to be extended by two weeks. <laughs> it went a bit longer than two weeks, and somehow we're already here at our graduation, but class, we made it. <laughs> we survived our teachers finding out how to work Zoom. Logins, logouts, crazy new schedules, a stay-at-home order, filled up houses with everybody yelling at each other to be quiet, and what do you know, we survive. <laughs> it feels like it was just yesterday when we walked into the building for the first time and stared up terrified at 18-year-olds who looked like they were in their 40s. <laughs> there was the first class, the first test, the first relationship, the second relationship, the third relationship, the discovery that you were the problem, and in high school we even experienced our hashtag first pandemic. But being here tonight to celebrate this major milestone, even in the face of all this uncertainty, we all symbolize what it means to persevere. And tonight, we don't just commemorate our class, we also gather in person to acknowledge the past two graduating classes who missed their ceremony. And how incredibly lucky we feel to have avoided a virtual graduation by just one year. But what could I possibly say? What answers can help a group like us? A group that is growing up in a time where it seems like negative images are everywhere our phone screens, computer screens, our television screens. And because we may not be directly involved in everything that goes on in this world, we start to feel helpless. There's a lot that needs changing, but we don't quite know where to start. So what can we do to make this place a little bit better off? To make our impact on the world we're walking into? When we start a new job, there's a good bet that on our first day, our boss will tell us something like this. So this is the way we do things around here. And without thinking, we'll watch everyone else trying to do things the way they do things. Because after all, it's the way things have always been done. So why should we challenge it? But how often will we hear this? Well, sure, we've always done it this way. But hopefully you can show us how things can be done better around here. Following other people is often the easiest way. We can go along and follow the crowd, assuming that we can't change anything that wasn't created by us. But look around. This world demands new leaders, new change makers, new idea makers. After all, there's no telling what the world will look like years from now, but of one thing we can be sure. Tomorrow's world will be made up by the optimist, one who chooses to look at life for what it could be, even when reality says otherwise. 
It takes a special kind of person to look at piles of rubble and envision a city in the future. We need to look at life as one big possibility instead of one big circumstance. Life isn't a perfect science. Sure, we all have similar wants, but how we see things, how we go about achieving life, that's different for everyone. It's different in what job we want to work, our dream house, or who we want to marry. It's different in the kinds of movies that we enjoy, the conversations we have, even the food we like. So when we get upset with our place, wishing for what someone else has, when we find life happening to us instead of for us, and nothing seems to be going our way, we should remember this. Life is an art, and our attitude gives it color. Our outlook gives it texture, and our perspective makes it real. It's up to us to see the world, whatever that world may be. It's up to us to make a day exciting, to make a day interesting, to see the blessings hidden in every day, to find our own perfect picture. So I now ask my class, what is your perfect picture? Not your neighbors, not your parents, not your friends, yours. Only you have the power to choose your attitude, to see this life's color. It's not on other people to see what we visualize, they won't get it. We shouldn't wait for the outside world to give us value, it won't. We can sit around and wonder what this life is worth, but there is no price tag on this life, so we must see the value ourselves. I hope you all remember what is really important as you go along on your journey. I hope you remember that the most valuable things we have in life we actually get for free. Love, family, friendships, curiosity, our minds, our wit, laughter, life itself. All of these priceless items we don't pay a dollar for, but by some strange force of nature, we get them. The irony is the most expensive items can actually be replaced pretty easily. The newest gadget comes every year. That new sports car comes out with a new model next month. Even that expensive Toronto home can be rebuilt. The things we were given for absolutely nothing, these items can never be replaced. Class of 2022, we have been through it all. Our four years were cut short, we missed out on quite a bit, and well, we dealt with plenty of uncertainty. We are the class of adversity, and the challenges we have faced will do nothing but shape who we are, the people of tomorrow. Remember, remember that those who missed out will appreciate more than those who did not. Remember that the adversity that you faced in high school was more than tomorrow's unit test. And finally, remember that when tomorrow comes with all its might, look to the class of 2022, because they will indeed be the solution. I have no doubt that all of you will do great things. Now there's a famous Spielberg film that you might know from the 80s called E.T. And in the film, there's this one very famous quote, a quote that I thought was fitting to end on for tonight. Wherever we end up this fall, every once in a while, for your parents' sake, do what E.T. says, and phone home. <laughs>